Elegus and Tari Carbon creating crackles when cruising. Patchy printers perplex the person pressing print. And bubbles, bubbles everywhere. Even in my print. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 209. Let's get into it. Starting off with friend of the channel, former podcast guest, and fellow Florida person, Willow Creative here with a Centauri Carbon that's doing some things. Let's take a watch. That, that shouldn't happen. Spicy. Elegoo over here trying to be like Bamboo Lab and oh, uh, oh yeah, by the way, we're at almost 40. So if you happen to have a Bamboo Lab A1 with the power supply NTC thermistor failure, please reach out to us. We are collecting the dead boards that we can have them analyzed by a professional. So we're going to cover all the costs associated with it. Call me the former long haired gamers nexus of 3D printing, I guess. We got Willow Creative here saying, remember when I said this would happen on the Elegoo Centauri print head cable when I received the printer? Yeah, it happened. So what's going on here is that the input cable that provides power, data, all of that to the print head of the Centauri Carbon. The actual cable strain relief has failed, and hilariously, it's failed right at the strain relief, which is the weirdest place to go. But Willow says that this is part of their own fault because the cable moves more when they print without the Bowden tube inserted for direct filament printing. But that shouldn't happen no matter what. Like, regardless of whether or not it has a Bowden tube in the machine, your machine should have adequate cable strain relief. I've looked at this entire garbage and said, geez, for 300 bucks, it's a decent printer, but you have to cut corners somewhere. And where do you cut corners? Well, you look at saving pennies everywhere. Now, is this explicitly because of cut corners? Maybe, maybe not, but it's certainly indicative of not using the highest quality components. Elegoo has a history of never being first to the plate. That's not their style. What Elegoo does is they wait, they sit back, they watch, and they look at all the ways they could take big brand products that exist out there and make them more affordable. That has made Elegoo one of the foremost players in affordable resin printing, to the extent that all of our affordable resin printers are Elegoo printers, because they're at a certain price point where if they have a problem, you just replace the dang printer. It's literally not worth fixing. It's better to buy the replacement parts and donate it, take the tax right off, and let the local maker space fix the printer, and they get it for free. But this is not something that you would want to have happen. Any time that you get electrical arcing, you have a high chance that this could get significantly worse if left untreated. And we have one further complication with the Centauri Carbon in that it is incredibly loud compared to other machines in that size category. I feel like that's an acceptable thing when you're only paying 300 bucks to have it be a little bit loud let me know your thoughts down below and i would assume there's likely a little bit of insulation that could be done to go ahead and quiet the machine down and at the same time keep those chamber temperatures nice and steady the centauri carbon while it has gone through some pretty serious revisions since it first came out elegoo has been really good at keeping the community abreast into what's going on and allowing users to upgrade all the parts that they're missing from their machines to the latest revision for no cost. And like, that's awesome. That is exactly how, if you are going to do this, which I generally don't like companies doing, I'm not a huge fan of them shipping products they know need work, but this is the right way to do it if you're doing that. Um, to be clear, please don't do that. It's really just using your paid user base as beta testing. And unless they've signed up for that, it's not really cool. You gotta hand it to Elegoo. They are at least taking consumer feedback seriously. And I'm hoping they can figure this out. A little bit of extra cable strain would likely go a long way here. Or even changing that connector to something that's not a 90 degree, maybe is a 45. Something that is less stressful on the wires themselves. I think that would go a long way. But if your machine is going through this, you should not use it at all until you get the replacement parts and the only thing to really do here is replace that cable we can see that there's two screws that should allow the cable to come out and you can just 
put a new one in. The easiest way to do this is to cut that cable, pull it through the cable chain and feed the new one in. But I'm not exactly certain how easy it is to feed that cable through the cable chain. Assuming it is. If it's not actually fed through the cable chain, probably not much of a reason for it to have that 90 degree angle. If you have a Centauri Carbon, I'd love to know your thoughts. Is this something that you also looked at and said, this could probably be an issue and has it been an issue and if so what have you done to attempt to mitigate it in future instances and if you do want to mitigate well me continuing to remind you to like and subscribe you can do so and my name is grant this is 3d musketeers and print fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose and if you are looking for more one-on-one -on -one style assistance with your 3d printers you can join our discord at the ten dollar tier and higher links are in that description down below but if you do want to get a little bit of help, tag us on the social medias, film a video, tag us in the description of it on YouTube. We'll be able to see it and give you a hand. It doesn't cost dime for that. But if you do want to support the efforts that we do, you can do so. $1 or more down below gets you access to tons of behind the scenes content, including hours of 360 footage from Bontech, behind the scenes from filming, and even unedited Print Fix Fridays when we do decide to release them, you know just for the fun of it. But moving on here, we've got a user asking what causes these inconsistent errors in printing. We've got what appears to be a fox of sorts. And while Yulvis might tell you that the fox says, <laughs> they don't. They're really loud and honestly kind of scary if you're not expecting what a fox actually sounds like. <laughs> this fox, however, has a messed up nose and some messed up paws, so... Let's look at fixing it. We've got a cooling issue here. It's a pretty easy one if you know what you're doing, but if you're new to it, you'll look at this and say, why is my printer printing like crap? What we have here is the machine is not giving enough time every layer for the layer below it to cool down. So you're putting molten plastic on top of molten plastic, 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 on top of molten plastic. But in reality, what you wanna do is either a, increase your minimum layer time to let the actual part itself cool down a little bit, or two, add more cooling. If your cooling fans are not at 100%, hey, put them to 100% for small layer times like this. Inside of slicers, you will often have the ability to adjust your fan speed for your minimum layer time. So if your layer time is below, say, 30 seconds, your fan goes to 100% for materials like PLA and PETG. But if your fan is already at 100%, the only thing that you can really do here is increase your minimum layer time and the machine will simply run slower, giving those layers some extra time. Now, the other thing that you can do, you can print multiples of these, which will give both of them a shared amount of time, or you can print a sacrificial part that is there simply to move the print head away, print a little piece, then move it back. Oh, yeah! This is something that is done often for time lapses and things like that, where you need the print head to go to a certain location to park so you can take a photo. Also used as a prime tower or a purge tower in multi-material systems or tool changers, but it's not normally used for cooling. So it is a cooling thing. It's not too big of a deal. You can try to reduce your overall temperatures to help it out as well, but we can see on the ears as well, we're dealing with a little bit of those errors too. I would recommend upping your minimum layer time to probably 20, 25 seconds. Looking at reducing your temperature a little bit, maybe five degrees Celsius if you can. And if you have access to extra fan power, turn up the fans. And if you don't, maybe you have a fan laying around, hey, a fan blowing over the print is certainly not going to make it any worse if it's PLA or PETG. But those of you that have dealt with this before, personally, I just slow the machine down, turn the heat down a little bit and just let it do its thing. But I'd love to know from you all, what would you do in a situation like this that isn't give it more cooling or slow it down? Love to know your thoughts. Next up from the Bamboo Lab subreddit, we've got a user here with these little dots. They believe they may be the great descendants of Don Ho himself. Tiny bubbles. Because as you can see, even in the filament, we've got tiny bubbles. And even after drying, we are still dealing with tiny bubbles. Initially, at least in my opinion, I would say that this is going to be a random seam, but the user says that is not the case. And 
yeah, when you look at the filament, it does have some bubbles in it, but it also looks suspiciously thin. That filament does not appear that it is 1.75 millimeter, and they said that they got it from a local supplier. I don't know who that local supplier is, but I'm gonna be straight with you. Stop buying filament from them because that filament is crap. It should not have bubbles in the filament itself. And yeah, if there's bubbles in the filament, drying it is not gonna do a gosh darn thing because it's not actually water. Well, it was water, it's now air because the water instantly evaporated and caused an air pocket to form in the filament, which creates a cavity that you see here. There are not many good ways to get rid of this problem. So realistically, I would just embrace it. The parts themselves don't look that bad, although the colors, eh, you know, not my first choice, but I don't see a seam on here, and it does not appear that these bubbles occur more than once per layer, so I'm still gonna say that it's random seams, but seeing the bubbles in the filament itself tells me you just got a really crappy supplier. And we can see that they did only pay $10 for that roll of filament, and the orange is from the same brand, but I, I will tell you, I wouldn't pay $3 for this, let alone 10. This is not quality material. And if your filament looks like this, has obvious impurities in it, send it back. Companies need to hold better standards for their materials because honestly, it's not worth fighting crappy prints to save a couple of bucks. Not in my opinion. And honestly, 10 bucks, if you're in the United States, is not that cheap for filament. I've seen Amazon deals well below that, even in the current economy state that we have right now. But realistically, this is not going to impact your print other than a very, 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 very slight amount of layer adhesion. And it doesn't look as nice, but 10 seconds with a piece of sandpaper, you're not even going to notice it anyways. Let's maybe choose a different manufacturer to get filament from. We always suggest just supporting local where you can. Being able to build a relationship with a local company is absolutely phenomenal. However, if they're not providing you with the product that you are expecting that a competitor might provide, or they're just simply not meeting expectations, then it's time to find another supplier. We hate doing that, and instead we'd rather try to work with suppliers to fix issues that they have. And 99 times out of 100, it's worked perfectly fine to build that relationship by saying, hey, I've had this problem. Here's what I see in the filament. Did I happen to just get a bad roll? This is maybe the first one or the last one in the batch, or is this a systemic problem that happened with this entire run? Reaching out to that manufacturer is the first step in this process. Maybe they'll work with you. Maybe they'll just give you your money back. Otherwise, prints don't look too bad. Couple little dots, not that big of a deal, all things considered. Last but not least, a follow-up to a fail from a few episodes back where we looked at this K2 Plus with some corner issues, but it's only on one edge. You guys had some awesome advice in those comments and the piece of advice that I was not expecting to work seems to have worked at least good enough for me. And it was, turn the temperature down. Y you wouldn't think that on only one edge, temperature would cause this issue but it does i don't know why i'm guessing that edge is being blocked somehow by the auxiliary cooling and the layer before it's really solidifying is starting to kind of pull back or separate a little bit and then the next one above it doesn't really meet then the next one does and then eventually it bridges across and you get lucky I don't exactly know why turning the temperature down worked for us, but it did. So those of you that said to turn the temperature down, thank you. It has actually resulted in less issues like this on our parts. I still think this one explicitly is more of a PA issue, but it could be temperature related as well. I wasn't the only one that suffered from this in the comments. So those of you that have tried other things as well, other than temperature, we, we've also messed around with speed a little bit, turned it up, turned it down. It didn't seem to have as big of an impact as like dropping 10 Celsius out of the print temperature seemed to like 80% solve the problem. There's still a little bit, but an 80% reduction is much easier to deal with than where it was. So kudos to all of you that assisted. It's one of the things that we love about this series and the fact that we've been doing it for over four years every single Friday. And I do want to give a huge shout out to those names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what you all do in making these videos possible and for helping us get to conventions like 3D Printopia, which is coming up very 
very soon. So if you are going to be there, come find us. We'll have uh, probably some maker chips. I, I don't know. We're going to start production on that pretty soon, but we'll take photos, sign stuff, whatever you want. Just come up to us when we're not filming. Always happy to have a chat. But that is all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, of course. And keep making awesome. Have a good one. We're up all night to get on top of molten plastic. On top of molten plastic. On top of molten plastic. On top of molten plastic.